Hello, and welcome to our week 9 class. I hope you are well and enjoying your week so far. We are wrapping up our boot camp this week with our third and final challenge assignment. So, I will go over this assignment with you in great details. And we also have a second assignment this week, which is the final project. If you remember, back in beginning of the course, you all shared final project ideas. And now, since we've spent a few more weeks learning about Python and the different programming skills, we want to revisit the project ideas to see if you have the skills and knowledge to pull it off as you had imagined. I want to set expectations for you, and I also want you to have fun with this final project. So, for this week's final project assignment, please revisit your final project idea. Keep in mind what you know how to do now in Python and ask yourself if you can create this project in the coming few weeks. If so, then please follow these steps. Create a post in this week's discussion forum about your final project. It doesn't have to be long, so please keep it to under 100 words. And please do follow the problem solution format. Then, please review other idea posts from your classmates and share your feedback. Tell them if you like their idea, provide any suggestions, and also be honest about if this can be coded in the given time frame and given our current Python knowledge and experience. Okay? All right, let's move on to the Challenge 3 assignment now. You are provided a Python file called recipe.py that you can download from this link. And here is the file once we open it. This code basically has three recipes and each recipe has a name, its ingredients, and the steps needed to cook this recipe. So, our first recipe name is spaghetti bolognese. The ingredients are as follows. And then we have the cooking steps. Then we see this repeated for two more recipes, chicken tekka masala and chocolate chip cookies. Then below these three recipes, we have three sets of what seems like repeated code. For each recipe, print out the name, the ingredients, and the steps. So here is the code to do that for the first recipe. Then the same exact code is repeated for the second recipe, and finally repeated again for the third recipe. And if I run this code as is, I see the printout statements displayed as expected. The code runs without errors. So, what's wrong then? Well, we learned already that code should not be repetitive. It's not part of best programming practices to have repeated code. Because, while this code might be okay for three recipes, what happens if we have 10,000 recipes? So, the goal of this assignment is to take this existing code and write a function that reduces the redundancy, or the repetition, in this code. And part of best programming practices is to write comments in our code, which this code currently lacks. So please add at least five lines of comments throughout your code. Now, as a programmer, you need to have tools and resources at your disposal. And the assignment instructions are asking us to use ChatGPT. But please remember to use it ethically and responsibly meaning please don't use it to do the assignment for you. We are learning how to code and how to debug code. If you let ChatGPTT do the entire assignment for you, then you won't learn much this week. So, I do want you to use ChatGPT to interact with it and help you to complete the assignment. And part of the submission for this week is a screenshot of your conversation with ChatGPT. So please make sure to include that as part of your submission. Then the other part to submit is your updated code with the new function that will reduce code repetition. Okay? So let me go back to my code. I'll copy all of this code. Then I'll go to chat GPT. And I'll type, what's wrong with this code? Then paste my code then hit enter. 
So, based on the feedback from ChatGPT, the code will run without errors and provides us with a couple suggestions. You may accept these changes and apply them as you wish. But the goal of this assignment is to create a new function to reduce repetition. So, I'll now type, but I see a lot of repeated code. How can I change this to make it more streamlined? But without providing the solution code for me. Then I'll hit enter. And ChatGPT provides some helpful hints. And one of those hints is to create a function that prints the recipe, details like the name, ingredients, and steps. And I can pass the recipe name, ingredients, and steps as arguments to the function. So in doing this, we avoid repeating the same printing logic for each recipe. And here is the updated code. I created a new function called print recipe that takes three parameters, recipe name, ingredients, and steps. And the body of this function definition is the same exact code as the repeated code from the old code, but less than number one, two, and three. So if I go back to my old code, I see these print statements, which are the same, but just differ in the number of the recipe we are dealing with. So I took this code and made it my function in the new code here. Then after this function definition, I have the exact same variables as before. This part has not changed. Then at the end of this code file, I have three function calls. I call the print recipe function three times, and each time I pass it the different recipe name, ingredients, and steps for each different recipe. So the first function call will call the print recipe function and pass it the arguments pertaining to the first recipe. Then the next function call will call the print recipe function again, but this time it will pass the arguments pertaining to the second recipe. And finally, the last function call will run the print recipe function and pass it the arguments pertaining to the third and final recipe. So, as you can see, I reduced my code by creating one function, and that reduced my redundant code. Now my code is more streamlined, scalable, and efficient. So, let's run this updated code to verify it works as expected. I didn't get any errors, which is always a good sign, and the output is as expected. I got my three recipes, and for each recipe, I get the name, ingredients, and steps. So we can say that we did a good job. Now, I wanted to just quickly go over a new Python function that is part of this code, and also the original code. So I'll go back to my code. Here, we see a function called enumerate. Now, this enumerate function is a built-in function in Python that allows us to loop over an iterable like a list and have an automatic counter that tracks the index of the current item. So this function is useful when you need both the items of the list and their index while you loop through it. Now I can technically do this functionality with a plane for loop, but it will involve more steps like defining an index, then incrementing the index with each iteration of my loop. However, with the enumerate function, this index logic is built in for us, so we don't have to worry about it. Now, the enumerate functions takes two arguments, but I only see one here. The first argument is required, while the second is optional. The first argument is the list of items you are iterating through, and the second optional argument is at what number to start the index counting. The default value is to start at zero, and this second argument is conveniently called start. So if you don't specify a start argument in the enumerate function, then it will start at zero index. And since the enumerate function in my code doesn't have a start argument, then my index will start at zero. But I want my output of the first step number to be step number one, not zero. And so that's why I have here i plus one. So if I run this code one more time, 
I see that the steps are numbered starting at 1. Let me go back to my code and let me modify my code slightly so that we do use the optional start argument. I'll add it here and type start equals to 1. So now my index count will start at 1. But because I have i plus 1, the steps will start at 2, which is not the behavior I want. Therefore, I need to remove the plus 1 code here. And that should work fine. By starting my step numbering system at 1, because of this start equals 1 argument. So, let's run this and test it out. And yes, my steps start at 1. Now, if you want to see the steps start at 10, then let's go back to our code. And let's modify the start argument to 10. Then run it again. And there you go. All the steps start numbering at 10. Because that's where I start my index. Now, you don't need to do this step. But I just wanted to explain the enumerate function. And show you that you can take advantage of the function arguments to simplify your code. Alright. Now what you need to submit for this assignment are two things. Please submit the .py file code for the recipe application. And please take screenshots of your conversation with ChatGPT and upload them with your code file as well. So please submit the code file and the screenshots. And please don't forget to add comments to your code file. Okay, well, that was it for this video lecture. I hope it was helpful, and please do reach out to me at any time with any questions. Thanks for watching, and I'll be seeing you in class. Take care, and bye for now.